Oh, Mr. Owl, it looks like our friends are back. Hi, welcome. We are so glad you are here and cannot wait to get started. Mr. Owl, do you know what I'm wondering about today? Today, I am wondering about matching patterns. But before we get started, I want to pour myself a cup of tea and then I will meet you at my desk. Today, I brought some of my daughter's socks that we can use to practice matching patterns. I bet it will be pretty easy to see which two socks go together. I have this green sock. Can you point to the screen at which sock I should match it to? Did you say this sock? You're right. So I'm going to pair them together. And now I have my blue sock with hearts. Do you see the other sock with hearts? Right here. Let's match those together. Good job. We just practiced matching patterns and helped with laundry. Another activity we can do to practice matching patterns is with my strips of paper. I'm going to spread out my paper and we are going to match two strips that belong together. There. Since I love seeing ladybugs around my house, I'm going to start with the ladybugs. Can you see a matching strip of paper for my ladybugs? Tell your teacher where it is. Did you point at this one? You're right. What I'm going to do now is make our activity into a craft. So every time we make a match, I'm going to staple, make a circle, and I will make a chain. At the end of our activity, we will have a fun math chain to remember our lesson. Let's start with another color. How about the paper with words on it? Can you see another strip of paper that has the same pattern? Tell your teacher where it is. Did you point to this one? Good job. So let's take those papers and add to our chain. I have my little stapler. And then I'm going, oops, hook this one together. How many chains do I have now? One, two, three, four. Let's keep going. Now I'm gonna grab my paper with the circles on it. Can you spot the matching pattern? Tell your teacher where it is. Did you point to this one? Good job. Let's add this one to our chain. Here we go. I had four and I have one more. There's five. And let's add another one to make six. We're getting close to finishing and my chain keeps getting longer. Let's add this paper next. Can you find the matching pattern to this strip of paper? Tell your teacher where it is. There it is, good job. Let's add this to our chain. I had six and here's seven. And then one more makes eight. Now I have two papers left. Let's just slide them together. That's an easy match. So let's add these to our chain. I had eight and I add one more. Here's nine. And then my last one makes 10. We did it. We matched our pattern paper. Good job. But I have one more way to practice matching patterns. Let me move this to the side. 
and let me show you my all-time favorite game when I was growing up, memory. Do you have a memory game at home? You might have one like mine or yours might look a little bit different. That's okay. You can even use a deck of cards and still play memory. And you know what I thought of? You might even make your own game by printing off pictures from the computer and using those to play memory. But let me show you how to start. I have some cards set out. Let me slide this to the side and I'll show you the pictures. I have a jump rope, a roller skate, and a baby carriage. And then here are my matches. That's too easy this way, so I'm going to turn them over and mix them all up. Let's see how I do. You can use all of the cards or you can use just some of the cards like I'm doing now. I'm going to look for matching patterns. Here's one roller skate. Oh, I didn't make a match. Let's try it again. Let's see. Oh, uh -oh. I think I know where that matches. I made a match, so I'm going to set it aside and let's see what's left. Let's try this card. Oh, I know where that match is. Do you remember where the matching pattern is? Right here, right? Yes, I did it. And I have two left. I sure hope these match. They do. We did it. This was a very simple way to play matching patterns with memory. You can make this game as hard or easy as you want by adding more picture cards each time you play. But you know what? We are not done. We still have one more activity. So let me clean up and I will get out my origami paper. Let me set this aside. Here we go. Let me set out my paper and you can start to see what shapes I made. Are you able to tell? Oops, those two are stuck together. And I have one more. There. Now, were you able to tell that this is a little puppy dog? Can you see his ears and his nose down at the bottom? And then I made a fish. And I also have a heart. Now, let's use our paper to match patterns. Since I just got a new puppy dog, let's start with our puppy dog first. Here is my puppy dog. Can you find another matching pattern? Don't let the different shape fool you. Tell your teacher which pattern matches my blue puppy dog. Did you say my fish? You're right. These two have matching patterns. Let's try again. Let's start with the red heart. Can you find a matching pattern for my red heart? This one probably has a different shape too. Tell your teacher which shape matches my red heart. Did you say my red puppy dog? You're right. They even happen to be right next to each other. I have two shapes that we still need to match their pattern. Can you tell your teacher which two shapes we still need to match? Did you say my dark blue heart and my dark blue fish? You're right. Those two have matching patterns. Isn't using origami fun? I thought, why not teach you how to make a simple origami shape? Are you ready? Let me slide my shapes out of the way and grab my paper. My paper is six inches by six inches. Yours could be bigger or yours might be smaller, but just make sure it's square. To start, take your paper, 
turn it upside down and fold one corner across to the other. Do you see what shape I made? I made a triangle. I'm going to turn it around for our project. My triangle also has matching edges. Be very careful that they match. A little secret, you might even trim the extra paper if it doesn't match exactly. Next, we are going to be making a puppy dog. Before we continue, let's fold our paper in half one more time. Remember, be careful to match your edges. So I'm going to take one corner and carefully fold it over and match. And then I'm going to press, press, press. Your teacher might help you fold and make sure our edges are nice and straight and even press down super hard to make them stick better. Then open it up and this line that we just made will help us when we fold our ears and our nose. What I'm going to do is make the first ear. So almost, let's just start right there and you're going to take the corner and fold an ear down. The trick is not to get all the way to the middle, but leave some part at the top. And press a triangle shape down. Do you see that triangle? Let's do the other side. I'm going to take my corner. My finger kind of helps me tell where to bend. And then fold the other corner down. Press it really hard. There. Can you see my puppy dog ears? We're almost done. We need to make his nose. So let's look at the bottom and let's fold up a little bit at the bottom. Another triangle shape. There's part of my nose. You could be done there if you want or if you want to fold it back again so it touches right at the bottom, you could do that too just like I did. There you have it. Some boys and girls even like to use wiggly eyes or markers and draw on little puppy dog eyes. Now, set your new puppy dog aside and we're going to get ready to work in our math book. I have my book. Let's open up to page seven for lesson 1.4. There it is. Oh, tell your teacher, what do you see on our page? More origami, just like we practiced. Tell your teacher what shapes you see. I see a puppy dog just like we made. And then, is this a boat or is this a hat? Tell your teacher what you think. Both choices, I think, are right. And then I see an airplane. So today, let's look and see which patterns match each other, and then maybe we can find who made each design. Are you ready? Let's start with the orange puppy dog. Can you point to a shape that has the same pattern as my orange puppy dog? I think there's more than one choice. Can you find both choices? I see the boat and I see an airplane. Did you see those two? Let's try the blue boat. Which shapes match that pattern? Can you point to them? Tell your teacher which shapes match the blue boat. Oh, I see the blue puppy dog right next to it and the blue airplane way on the side. Did you see that? And what color is left? Our green pattern paper. So let's start with the green airplane. Can you find the green airplane? 
There it is. Point to the two other shapes that have the same pattern as my green airplane. I see the puppy dog and the green boat. Which clues do you see that tells us which shape each child is making? Tell your teacher how you know which shape each child makes. I know. Look at the paper they each are using. This little boy is using the green paper. He must be making the other green shapes. Do you agree? Tell your teacher which shapes did the boy in the yellow shirt make? Tell your teacher what you think. Did you say because he was using the orange paper, he must have been the one to make the orange shapes? I think you're right. So that just leaves us one more child. Which shapes did the little girl make? How do you know? Tell your teacher how you know which shapes the little girl made. You're right. She made all of the shapes with the blue paper. Good job. So before we go today, I want you to remember to practice matching patterns. Just like we did in our book and just like we did earlier, you can match patterns anywhere you want. And the best way to practice is helping with your laundry. So this week, I want you to practice matching the patterns in your socks and helping put away your laundry. Do you think you could do that? Good job! Mr. Owl, we had so many fun activities today. Do you have a favorite one? Mine was when we played memory. I used to love playing that game when I was little. Do you remember what I wondered about when we first started? I wondered about matching patterns. But the most important question is, what do you wonder? See you next time.